But that's that's a bit insulting. What is? I don't know. Hey guys, Enzo here from Home Theatre Engineering with the lovely Andrew Poole. He's Hi. from Home Theatre Engineering as well. <laughs> um, what we have here, so uh, we'll get you guessing. There's no labels it's on it. It's another. It's another box. Cardboard box. <laughs> It's another we, we brown got, box. Got, we got a, a factory uh, full could, of We could start a recycling just, plant. It's just amazing. And, yeah. you know, actually that, that speaks to it. You know, one of the frustrations is the amount of cardboard that comes in. Oh, I'm not picking on anyone here, but it's like, gee whiz, you know. It's we just, use a lot of it in this industry. It, yeah, <laughs> and it's kind of sad. And if there was another way to pack stuff, that would be awesome. Anyway. Well, you know what's in here because you clicked on the video because it's in the title, obviously. So um, we right. have here a Mad VR. The Mad VR. Extreme. Extreme. Let's get it open. So let's talk about Mad VRs and the world of uh, video processing. Yep, yep. So we use Trinovs a lot for audio processing, and that's our kind of go-to for the uh, Creme de la Creme uh, Hollywood yeah. Studio reference cinemas we build. Uh, and obviously, in the world of that market, there is also things like video processors, i.e. Um, other brands that we're not going to mention, and uh, Mad VR. Now it so, says, don't take it out of the box. Don't so take it out of the box. Like, okay. um, the, don't take the yeah. inner yeah. out. So recently, we got sent a Mad VR. Now, Andrew has an extensive history of uh, video processing and videoing, your calibrations. He's been doing it for a long time. Um, just very quickly, I'll just get this out of the way. So, remote control, which is wireless, oh. and the adapter that goes in the back. Uh, it, um, you can't, pretty clever actually, you can switch this remote from wireless through to infrared. Aren't most remotes wireless? Uh, yeah, and that's, yeah. <laughs> I threw you off there, didn't I? But like, um, I, I believe this is probably Bluetooth, I'm not entirely yep. sure, but you can switch it over to an IR. And that's kind of cool because if you're writing drivers as I have been for the control system, um, I can then switch it over to infrared, program that control system yeah. and, and off we go. Yep. But there is oh, credit to these guys and, and of course most of the guys we work with, they provide free of charge their um, control for and other mm. uh, like Crestron drivers uh, off their website. Um, so getting back to it, so Andrew obviously has an extensive history with the ISF and recently PVA, so big on getting video to where it's at. Um, let me give you a hand, mate. Yeah. Yeah, let's go. And, you know, for us, it's important that we try and extract as much information yeah. um, from video as possible. And how do we do that? So some will argue, in hindsight, that you shouldn't have to do this and you shouldn't have to be able to extract more. But at the same time, there are always limitations and there are always things that you just can't do. Um, and even Barco themselves, who have the best projectors in the world, highly recommend using one of these guys with, for instance, like a Barco Bragi, which we're gonna do a video on, because those two together, it's like Des and Troy. Okay, it's so together. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna do a video on that, and um, honestly, I, I can say right now, the best picture I have ever seen in my life now comes quite specifically from the combination of a Barco Bragi, which is a 5K native chipset, teamed up with this, and, and there is a million reasons, but that's a whole other video because there's a yeah. lot I want to talk about. Um, but, uh, you know, let's talk about this now. So, um, so yeah, look, I mean, again, our whole philosophy is getting the best out of picture and the best out of sound. And having a video processor this powerful, and essentially, yes, you're right, it is a PC, um, but the brains behind it and the menu system and the interface and how much we can and can't do um, is phenomenal. So Andrew will run you through it because he's the expert. Okay, so there are really two products on the market. There's a Lumigen, and uh, you know I've I've got to say you know Lumigen and uh, Jim who who developed Lumigen is a phenomenal product. But it's been around a long time. Uh, personally, I find that the interface on the Lumigen is not something that I would consider user friendly unless you spend an awful long time on it. The big uh, kudos to this is that the interface is something that a user can use immediately. Mm. It makes perfect sense and it, it, it out of the box is great. But um, this thing uh, again uh, has uh, the ability to do an awful lot of things including, and this is kind of exciting, this will uh, process the 5k for the Bragi chipset um, straight out of the box. And uh, this can do uh, processing at 60 hertz on just about any signal. It, it, it's phenomenal. Um, 
So uh, I'll uh, pop in some uh, images here of the uh, interface. So as we go through, there's two primary interfaces. One actually shows uh, like your initial kind of product settings, mm -hmm. and the other one is changeable user settings. And the other really cool thing about this is there are two, there's what they call the base option. That's what the system is fixed with. But then when you want to play with it and see how things look better, then you have another option where there's temporary, and then if you make the changes, you can look at it, play with it. You're not affecting it. If you restart your unit, it's, it goes back to default, um, to the base settings. Um, but you can spend all your time playing without risking messing anything up. But then if you've decided that's what you want, you hit the green button on the remote and that sets it to your base settings and, and off you go. Um, and I've got to say, if you the sheer power of this thing, if you think about the fact that what it's processing like in the time and speed, the milliseconds of one single frame, of yeah. one single frame, and how many, and like how many, well, it's just mind boggling at how uh, we had Pascal when we took it, one of these to his house to show him his light. The fact that it's taking a signal from a Blu ray player in, at a frame, yeah. at a frame, and then spinning it out to the projector and then onto the screen, and that's all happening and processing is really phenomenal. So, to think about. so the, 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 the big buzz is dynamic tone mapping at the moment. Now, one of the issues with dynamic tone mapping that I have is that each person, whether it's uh, JVC, whether it's Lumigen, whether it's these guys, are writing their own version of how an image should look, whereas Rec. 709 was set in stone. Um, and this is because, effectively, of the shortcomings of projectors. Um, and it's also because Dolby has refused to recognize uh, Dolby Vision on projectors mm -hmm. because of the light output. Now, I understand that, but, but that also means that we're then deprived of frame-by-frame -frame tone mapping. Uh, what this gives us is that kind of thing. It gives us frame-by-frame frame -frame tone mapping, so it adjusts each frame. So what Enzo's saying is, as a frame comes in, if the movie has the metadata for like one set of metadata for the entire movie or one set of metadata for a scene, if that scene suddenly looks out a window or outside and the light level changes in the scene, the metadata is fixed. Yeah. With this, as that scene changes, this then examines that frame and looks at it for everything, for its black levels, its white levels, its color, everything in between, and then adjusts it to put it on a consistent scale so that uh, it, you, you get the, the peak detail and the highlights and the low, you know, the shadow recovery in every single frame. But this thing does so much more. And one of the most exciting things that this can do is that it can recognize the signal, incoming mm. signal format. Yep. So yep. say six, six, the classic, let's talk about Aquaman, right? Aquaman. Um, so you've got the changing scene where it goes from effectively uh, like an IMAX sized image straight out to cinemascope. And I actually watched that to have a look at the picture quality and I suddenly realized something that I've never been able to really enjoy before. And that is this thing was making the switch for me through the Bragi seamlessly. Um, I yeah, didn't have none of this. I, I didn't have to raise a finger. It just it set the ratio correctly and it adjusted the image. Absolutely phenomenal. The other thing is, you know, it, you know, we're talking about scope screens. One of the things, if we have people who like watching sport or mm. sixteen by nine, um, a linear stretch, non non linear stretch mm. on this now. Um, and what that means is that uh, you can take a, a narrower image, stretch it out, and it, but it's done with an algorithm that means that stretch is incremental per mm. pixel as it goes out. And in fact, these guys have also got an algorithm for uh, vertical correction adjustment and all sorts of things. Um, so you can essentially watch a sport wrestling, uh, racing, Formula One, anything at 16 by nine in a cinema scope. Uh, and and it, um, it's actually amazing the difference and, yeah. and how we've seen it before on other products. Mm. Um, but, you know, watching Formula One in Cinemascope is phenomenal, or the, even the AFL in Australia or the football. As and we and call form, it. Formula One, we think of it as a very kind of wide sport, but mm. it's obviously all filmed in 16 by 9. Yeah. Um, so. Now, you don't have to do that, it's an option. Okay. Um, well, I know what's going to happen. There's going to be comments about this because obviously with the fact that COVID has forced a lot of these movie studios to go straight to Netflix and Paramount and all that, yeah. and we know that there's this factor that they're all kind of going, okay, well, this is on a TV, so let's make everything 16-9. Yeah. Um, you are right to an extent, but again, like Andrew's pointed out before, whatever a director's filming, a lot of the time all that important information is in that little area in the middle which then it's a safe, safe area. It's a yeah. safe area. So even if something like this or an anamorphic lens is cutting the top and bottom off of that 16 by 9 content on 
that's there on purpose. You're not losing. It's not like you're Critical losing data, the yeah. top of the person's head or anything. So, well, but the point of this is that it doesn't cut that image off. Correct. You know, it, it corrects the aspect ratio as, as you're watching. Um, so there is a bit of manipulation of the original content, but it's to enjoy it. You know, as, with, with as the non-linear stretch. You know, and, yeah. and look, some if you're a purist, and that's fine, and I respect that, and I I'm not sure where I sit on that to be honest. But my point is, if you if you're a customer who says I want a cinema, but I enjoy my sports and I want to see sports big, then then that's for you. If not, that's fine. It's a personal thing, mm. so mm. you know, let's not let's diss on people for that. But um, um, yeah, I, I think the thing is that you can't get this processing power, this software, these algorithms into you know a, a projector and when you've got someone like barco saying this is a good thing when you've got barco saying this enhances even our projectors then you have to sit up and pay attention yeah. um you know what they're saying is you know that this is not something that we want to spend time or money on at where we're in the purity of the uh, optics whereas this is going what can we do with the signal yeah. to enhance the image on screen with projectors which have limited light output that's the big deal. Yeah. You know, you could argue, and and um, you know that if you had a two thousand, four thousand, or even a ten thousand nit TV, would you need this? Maybe not, because a you've got Dolby Vision, b you've got high light output. But in terms of getting an image out, um, so if you're building again a high end cinema, uh, then this is uh, an absolute must have, and it takes out also that remote control fiddle factor, where you know. Yeah. Uh, there's sure. nothing worse than you build a cinema, and often we'll build a cinema for a certain family member, but then they'll come in and the other family members don't understand how to switch from 16 by 9 to 235, even if we put just a dedicated button on the remote control, but it's like, the, you know, they don't get it. Um, this one, there's no getting it to get. It does it for you. It just does it for you. You play the content, yep. it fits. Uh, and look, we know, obviously, it sits at a price point, and we know that that price point is a little bit high. It's the same price as a trend off, essentially. So... But, you know, again, it sits there in a market designed for that market for a reason. Um, and so, so it's a good point. If you put in a Trinov, you'd put in one of these. Yeah, I mean, if you've got a video process, an audio processor, why wouldn't you have a video processor? And we're massive ambassadors, and Andrew's been saying this since we've started YouTube, why leave performance on the floor? Why leave, you know, let's try and take as much blood out of the stone as possible. Let's try and really maximize, you know, if you've spent 100K, Let's get as much of that as possible. Um, we're forever seeing people with 50, 60% of the floor still on the floor. So. Well, and, and look, you know, um, one of the things that we have been probably fairly criticized for is we don't spend a lot of money on fancy um, uh, designs of a room, like, you know, veneered wood panels with backlighting and stuff. You know why? Because when you turn the lights out, you don't see it. It's actually, we've actually had customers that have said, oh, you know, I've liked this look and it's a beautiful room with like all this wood and it kind of looks like the hull of a ship type of thing. And that's great. And if you've got the money, fantastic. If you can do that on top of the cinema, great. But, you know, again, like Andrew said, that, you know, you bring, you walk in, your friends see it, you sit down, you press play. It's probably a minute that you get to experience that decor. Once the lights are out, we want that as dark as possible and as immersive as possible. Yeah. And the less distractions, the more immersive, the yeah. more engaging. Uh, and the moment, you know, people leave star lights on or you can see the Re wood or whatever it is, the reflection, the fact that you have to um, compromise perhaps your acoustic treatment or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Look, look it, it, we're not saying you can't do it, but we're saying our focus, right, is on the experience. So when you sit in that chair, yeah. you should feel like you're floating up in the air, that you're absorbed in that experience and there's nothing in that room to distract you. Look, that's just our philosophy. And we've had customers go, oh, I never really thought of it that yeah. way. And they've gone away from spending yeah. 50, 60 grand on decor. They've spent half and the rest has gone into getting stuff like this. To which, get, and and so know, they get in that same room, better far, far better experience. Yep. Um, so yeah, look, this is an amazing product. I, I love the fact that the menu is so user friendly. I yep. love the fact that it's supported by regular firmware updates and there's a, a hell of a lot of testing going on. I love yep. the fact that it's supported strongly by companies like, like Barco. And as I said, when you see this video with this and the Barco Bragi, the picture is insane. Just and we, and we've actually insane. got a picture which we'll put up here um, it's a video shot we done on a Sony um, uh, 790 of we use this and we're watching Ready Player One. I've actually got a before and after photo that we'll put here mm -hmm. and you guys will see. And that's just in a photo, just the difference. And that was literally out of the box. Andrew had only just started playing with it. 
all we done was turn, what did we turn on? The HDR boost? Just, the, yeah, just yeah, we just turned on the HDR. Yeah, the, and just the, the, the popping of the green and the blues and everything. And you'll see that in the photo. It's yeah. phenomenal. So, you know, look, there is a question over, you know, um, accuracy um, over the image you prefer to see. That's another debate. Um, but in terms of this optimizing mm. an image, fantastic. Uh, so, I, I, look, I think that's it. And uh, kudos to the boys at Mad VR. They've been, uh, they actually tracked us down. They reached out to us and wanted us to really play with this and give some feedback before they kind of went really live with it. Um, but they're really accessible and really eager. And sometimes we actually take longer to get back to them. <laughs> so apologies, but um, they're very keen. And again, like Trinov, they're there. If we need questions, support, um, the support network on products we like to choose. It makes our life easier, but we, you know we stand by our products, and but they we stand also by dig us, into. So. It. I mean, we know that a lot of people think we're a pain because we ask a lot of hard questions. Um, you know, recently um, Enzo asked a tough question about you know the Trinov Two Channel Unit, um, and then everyone goes, "Oh yeah, you're right." Um, and we asked some mm. questions about this um, because you know, I wanted to ensure yeah. that this was doing the five K resolution, and, and the word came back from. And what was his quote? Uh, that that was very astute of you guys to pick up on this. Yep. You know, so look, we do dig in <laughs> because it's important for our customers. It's really important for us to make yep. sure that we are optimised. We, we do get criticised for that. We've been called difficult to deal with in the past. <laughs> uh, we're not difficult to deal with, so I'll make that very clear. We fight for what's right, and our customers is we, what's we fight our really hard for our customers. So, yeah. Um, you know, someone spending a hundred grand or someone even spending 20 grand, that person, it's a lot, that 20 grand for that person is like a hundred grand for someone else. And we want to get it right. And if it means that we have to annoy the distributors and ask trivial or, or fight difficult for support, questions or, or fight for support, we're going to do that. And if that makes us difficult, well, so hey, be it. So you know, be we're, it. we're on the customer's side. That's yep. that's the end of the story. Yep. Okay, done. Sl slight deviation. So MadVR, thank you to Richard Litovsky um, and the guys at MadVR, again to Peter and Claver. Uh, look, this is an amazing product, um, and if it fits your budget, then it's certainly going to fit your your tastes, and you're going to love what this yeah. does. Yeah. No, I'm looking forward to getting this plugged in and seeing the next video. So thank you very much again. Like, subscribe, comment, and then, you know what? Share our videos into forums and into get them more out there. Um, you know, this is this takes up a lot of time. Um, especially Andrew's time because he does a lot of the editing. Um, but yeah, you know, please do and we'll take some Also, you know, comment, we don't get to cover every point on these items. So ask the questions down below and uh, we, we always try and answer your questions. Mm. Uh, obviously keep them sensible, keep them focused, um, you know, and uh, if they're respectful questions with, with, you know, a good reason, then we'll definitely answer them. Yeah. All right, guys, thank you very much. And uh, we'll get on to the next video. <laughs> Cheers. Thank you. Bye for now.